made it home, I dug her out, then I made her one of my aces. Marijuana fragrance, this tree here is outrageous. Want me to play in your city, send an email to my agent. David West is available. The man who was almost an all-star this year. Should we sign him for the Utah Jazz Association? Well, it'd probably come at an expense. Looks like if we did that, we'd probably have to trade Marcin Gortat and then bump Derek Favors into the five at our starting rotation, slotting Der David West in there as the four. I don't know. Let me see uh, what you guys think. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. The contracts would be about equal. We'd actually save a little bit of money, but whatever money we saved, we'd probably have to you know, give to whatever player we ended up trading for. I saw Jonas Valanciunas in there a decent deal. I'm not looking for a big body though. I'd prefer to get a pick or someone who I could just kind of sit on the bench because you don't want to have too many guys. You can't have 12 guys all demanding for minutes. You'll run into chemistry issues. You'll run into all types of issues. We do also have a little bit of a problem with Vince Carter. He was a little bit upset but I think he's coming around now. That's good to see. We're only 10 and 10 entering this game. Well, going up against the Boston Celtics, it's going to be a tough game. One that hopefully we can win. We need to get on track here. This has not been the best start for us, but I apologize for the long layoff from this series. What's going down, everybody? It's straight out of Boston here. And yeah, I haven't posted this since last Thursday, I believe. Um, my PS3 was having some issues and I couldn't even start up 2K. So I apologize for that. This series is back, obviously. Uh, you can see it on your screen right now. And uh, you can see we're going up against the Boston Celtics, a very good team. In this association, they're 92 overall. They don't have too many superstars, but they do have a lot of very solid players. And this is the first time in these two young players' careers that they have faced off against each other. Jabari Parker and Andrew Wiggins, the two kids probably going to go 1-2 in the draft unless something changes in the 2014 NBA draft. Very highly touted out of high school. Andrew Wiggins is undecided as of now, as of when I'm recording this commentary. If he comes out tonight, then I'll probably uh, be screwed. But Jabari Parker is going to Duke. I'm pretty excited for that as a Duke fan. KG in the post puts that one right over Gortat. He gets his own rebound on the miss, puts it in. So it's an early 2-0 lead for the Boston Celtics. Now, hopefully we can come back out after a pretty disappointing game. Uh, in the last episode where we did lose to the Miami Heat. But look at Paul George hitting the three early. That's a good sign. I struggled with him shooting a little bit last episode. But when he hits his threes, that means his game is all on. Enos Cantor pick and roll with uh, Eric Bledsoe. Enos Cantor with the one-handed slam. Look out. That was a crazy slam. You don't usually see that out of Enos Cantor, but he is a little bit athletic. Definitely want to look out for him. You know, he usually is the type of guy that's going to put it around, put it in the basket when he's around the rim. Not usually dunk on people, but rely on his uh, tough body and uh, ability to, uh, what's the word? I guess, oh my god, I can't even think of it. But uh, I guess take contact in order. But the chase down block by Jabari. Now Eric Bledsoe gets the tough contact layup. I normally wouldn't have taken that shot, but I had to because I wanted to get a full replay of this. Look at Jabari Parker on the chase down on BJ Young. Oh wow, what a crazy Crazy block, and we speed it up a little bit. Eric Bledsoe with a nice, tough layup over Andrew Wiggins. So, obviously, there was a bit of pressure on Jabari Parker, who I believe went number one overall this past draft, and we eventually traded for him. So, so there's a bit of pressure for him to kind of show out against a rookie in Andrew Wiggins, who, you know, like I said, two guys have been compared to each other a lot. Uh, from what I've heard, it seems like Andrew Wiggins is the more athletic type, whereas Jabari Parker is a little bit slower, but I guess can do some other things. I'm not 100% sure on that. Jabari Parker, I did see get a nice dunk. In the uh, USA Summit game, uh, was it like a week ago or something? But look at Andrew Wiggins with the crazy Jordan layup. Let's take another look at this one. It goes up with the right, scoops under, kind of unnecessarily, but hey, whatever, man. Whatever, whatever floats your boat, Andrew Wiggins. That was pretty cool. Anyway, Paul George will run out the clock there at the end of the first quarter. I didn't even realize the clock was winding down, so I didn't take a shot. So we end up ending the first quarter up 30 to 23 against the Boston Celtics. Hopefully, this lead can continue throughout the game. Jordan Crawford now bringing the ball up uh, to Landry Fields, a new acquisition for them. Now Rondo taking the mid-range, making the mid-range. That's something good to see. It's uh, looks like he's developed the mid-range game a little bit in this association. Maybe not. We'll have to see. Can't leave Jordan Crawford that wide open. He'll burn you almost every time. Gets a little bit out of control sometimes, but when he's open, he's going to make his shots. That's what makes him so good. Eric Bledsoe with the ball now, dribbling it. Now we're going to give it to Paul George, and Paul George with his kind of high-arcing shot. He has a very high release point. He doesn't need to be, you know, 
pretty, I mean, what am I trying to say? He can hit shots when he's kind of closely defended, as can Kyle Korver. Look at Korver for three right there. I love that shot for him. It's so fluent. It's so nice. Archie Goodwin, I'll let pass to Jordan Crawford running the break. You know Jordan Crawford can put him in the basket, and he does just that. Nice pull-up, too, from him. Like I said, he can't do many things in the NBA, but one thing he can do is score. Rondo bringing up the ball now. He's got wings with him. Andrew Wiggins, tough layup, gets it to go. Looks like it could have been an and one, but the Celtics are back to just within three points here. Eric Bledsoe gives it to a cutting. Derek Favors going to work in the post. He's going to go up and under and put that one in. He's got 11 points early on for the Utah Jazz. Jordan Crawford misses the three there. We end up getting it. Paul George to Parker. Out to Derek Favors. Pulls up as time expires, and it's good. Derek Favors with the surprising buzzer beater. That gives us a little bit of momentum. We are up 52-47 to 47 now going into half, so looks like a pretty even game so far. Right around that 50-50 margin, or not 50-50 margin, but 50-50 point total that I'm always looking to get. Parker turns it over there. Kevin Garnett in the steal outlet to Andrew Wiggins. Kevin Garnett, one of the best passers for a big man of all time. You know he's going to be able to make those nice outlet passes. Andrew Wiggins is 8 of 9 from the field, but Parker pump fakes. He's going to go in there. He's got a little bit of space. He's going to end up pulling up for three in the corner, and it is good. Jabari Parker is a very good three-point shooter, at least in this game he is, so I'm very excited about that. I do love having shooters on my team. Andrew or Andre Miller up to Vince Carter for three. Andre Miller, man, a man that I have maybe you see is so fun to watch on the Nuggets. I think the Nuggets should give it to him more in kind of like isolation situations and let him you know, just kind of do his thing. I don't know. I'm going to make probably an NBA playoff discussion video coming out pretty soon. I want to say at the end of the first round, possibly. And then uh, just kind of talk about my thoughts. Uh, as for right now, I think the Warriors are going to beat the Nuggets. I think that the Bulls are going to close out against the Nets. I think same thing with the Knicks. Uh, Pacers, same thing. And I think that the Thunder are going to probably win in five against the uh, Rockets. So as for series that I'm forgetting, well, oh well. <laughs> oh, and I think the Clippers are going to beat the Grizzlies. I, I, I still, even though after that last performance, I still think the Clippers are going to win. It's going to be a six or seven game series. So that half court shot almost goes in. Now we end up ending the third quarter. We are up 72 to 71. So a very close game. A little bit on the defensive side, but not too much. So it looks like we are headed for a fantastic finish coming up. Andre Miller with the ball. He's going to end up coming around the screen from Ennis Cantor. Down to Derek Favors, and Favors puts it in. Favors has 19 points now. I started going to him a lot in these kind of late quarters. I wanted to get some isolation situations. He was being covered by, I believe, a stretch four. I think he had, a, like, Archie Goodwin on him at one point. So I had to give it to him down low. Garnett was busy with Cantor, but Garnett is going off right now. And look at the emotion. He is, like, crazy on the court right now. But here's what I'm talking about. He hits a cutting Eric Bledsoe. That's the thing. one thing that I love is big men who can pass. And that ability to pass out of double teams is so important because you can be so good, but when a team throws a double team at you, you got to be able to pass out of it to an open cutter. Eric Bledsoe with the tough layup gets it to go on the hop step right there. He's showing that even though we did get a lot of offensive weapons in the offseason, he's still not to be forgotten on the offensive side. So 84 to 81, now 86, 83. Eric Butzel with the ball, slowing it down here. Looks like Paul George is gonna cut off ball. He gets a screen from Favors, runs around. He's wide open and he hits the mid range too. Uh, I don't know, Paul George's mid range is better than his three point shot it seems. So that's good to see. Even though mid ranges are hard to hit in 2K because it seems like the defense kind of levitates towards you more often in the mid-range game but either way Kevin Garnett now has seven points in this uh, half he's really starting to pick it up for the Celtics showing that he can still play at a high level in the NBA even three years down the road Andrew Wiggins gets the steal and the pull up too the Celtics are within one we have two and a half minutes to play Paul George bringing it up what's he gonna do he's got some space he drives in and he gets the spin layup putting the spin cycle on Archie Goodwin and George gets that one to go. 94 to 89 now. Garnett inbounding. He gets it to Archie Goodwin. Goodwin down the lane. Leaning layup. It's good. Wow. Those usually don't go in. But Archie Goodwin finishes that one. 94 to 91. Looking for a dagger here. Paul George. Our man pulls up. It's good. Paul George, the man who we're going to rely on to take a lot of those late game shots this year. Gets it to go. Now Rondo trying to bring it up quickly. He blows right by Eric Bledsoe. Showing off that speed. It's a three-point game once again. Looks like the, Jet, or the Celtics are going to have to foul. We end up, they end up not fouling. We end up missing our shot. So they got the ball back with eight seconds left, and they immediately inbounded to Rondo. And I decided we were up three. We were in the bonus. Let me foul Rondo. He didn't make either of them. We got the ball back, made our free throws, and then we end up winning the game 98-93. So a little bit of a head coaching strategy right there. I just noticed that, you know what? Not only is Rondo shooting, he's only like a 50 to 60% free throw shooter. 
but they would need a three to win. If I foul them, they can only get two. So I thought it was a pretty good uh, strategy, and I decided to go through with it, and it worked. So we ended up beating the Boston Celtics, a very good victory for the Utah Jazz. Now we know we can beat teams like this. We know that we can finish games, which is always a good thing. I did have a little bit of a fear that we weren't going to be able to finish this one off, but Paul George proved to be very, very valuable in the late kind of game situation we could give to him in the low post same thing with Derek Favors who's a budding superstar he got 21 11 and four dimes as well as a block Jamari Parker had two blocks of his own so very good games out of both of them and you can see for the Celtics Andrew Wiggins did drop 26 a very efficient night for him going 11 to 16 he definitely proved himself to be worthy of that high lottery pick that he was drafted with so anyway your player of the game is gonna be a, looks like Eric Bledsoe I'm a little bit surprised no it's Derek Favors I know it's just one of his assists. Yeah, Derek Favors, very, very good game. He ends up with 21 and 11. That's going to wrap it up for me. So I thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy. Here's what's out. Peace.